Hello teachers and welcome to this video on how to successfully manage time in class. Now this is an area that all teachers struggle with. I know I personally have to constantly reevaluate the way I manage time in class. And this can also be difficult because every student is unique and also the material can really vary in content. So in this video we are going to discuss A three general tips on how to prepare for your classes and therefore manage your time. And B, how to manage your time within three of the most commonly used source materials. One, step into reading. Two, write source. And three, wonders. Now, if you wanna just skip ahead to the parts in that video that talk about the subject you're looking for, then just follow the time indicators next to the points. Okay, so let's get started with point number one, which is three general tips on how to prepare for the classes. So we're gonna look at three points. Number one, read and analyze the material beforehand. Number two, create a class guideline. And number three, organize your students and classes in Classen. Okay, so let's get started with point number one, read and analyze the material beforehand. Now this point may seem obvious, but it's very crucial. If you do not read over the material before your lesson, you will not be able to manage your time properly. You will miss out on the main objective of the lesson and you will spend too much time on unnecessary points in the lesson. So before your lesson, read over the material, whether that be in Classen or using Acrobat Reader, and ask yourself these questions. Which points are more important for this particular student? Which points will be too hard for this student? Or which points will be too easy for this student? What is the objective of this lesson? What is the target language? At what minute mark should I be at this particular slide? minute 15, minute 25. Whether your student has a 30 minute class or a 45 minute class or a 60 minute class, it's up to you to make good use of every minute in your lesson. Point number two, create a class guideline. Now every teacher has a different way of organizing their students or their classes. Now the eJoy profile page for each student is a great help. It helps you really to keep track of the homework you've given them, maybe a point that you really wanna emphasize or have them work on. I personally have found creating a class guideline to be of great help to help me manage my time in the class. And it kinda of looks something like this. So right before I enter into my class, I look over this class guideline to help me remember, for example, what warm up I had in mind for that particular student, what homework I need to check, what games or prizes I have prepared for that student, or what video I would like to show that student. By having this guideline, I have an idea of how I will distribute my time during the lesson. Do you have any guidelines or tips on how you organize your lessons? I would love to hear them. Okay, so tip number three is organize your students and classes in Classen. Now, the great thing about Classen is that you can read over your material, create games and exercises, import images for that lesson days before your actual class. So how can you do this? Well, after you log into your Classen account, simply hit the blackboard icon. You will be taken to a completely fresh and new blackboard where you can freely draw, create games, etc. whenever you like. You can also access the cloud disk to open the class materials and read them over. I personally like to create folders for the days of the week I have classes and rename the PDF files after my students' time and name. This saves me time so I'm not looking for their class material during the lesson or the videos. And once you've finished preparing this lesson, simply hit the save button, name your EDB file. In this case, I will put the student's name and the date and hit enter and voila, your EDB file is saved and you can open it up, 
right as you log into your lesson. Organizing your lesson, your class material before the actual lesson is crucial. Not only to have an effective lesson, but also to manage your time properly. Okay, so how can I manage my time within the actual course material? Well, as I mentioned, we're gonna go over three of the most commonly used materials. Step into reading, write source, and wonders. So let's get started with Step Into Reading. Now, Step Into Reading was created with the objective of helping your student, well, read. But not just read, but also comprehend what they are reading. It is composed of fictional stories from the GK to G2 series. It can be the stories about Kipper and his family, Fly Guy, or the Magic Treehouse series. And then it goes on to fiction as well as nonfiction from the G3 to G5. The great thing about the Step Into Reading series is that it can be broken up into five parts. Number one, the homework review or the warm up. Number two, the reading of the story or passage. Number three, vocabulary and exercises. Number four, the mind map, or in GK, the material video. And number five, the comprehension questions and the homework assignment. Keep in mind that GK has an additional step, which is called the phonics. And G5 also has an additional step, which is called fun with idioms. Okay, so how can we manage our time within this series? Well, let's get started first with G1, G2, and G5. Now the great thing about these three course materials is that it has time indicators for each step. So if you follow these time indicators closely throughout your lesson, you should be able to cover the lesson material on time. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the mind map is the core lesson material. The mind map helps the student think logically and reason and comprehend what they read. And this exercise also helps you as a teacher see if they actually understood what they were reading. So this activity must be the top priority. So if you see that you're running a little bit more out of time, then you can just go over and get to the mind map as soon as possible because this is the core lesson material. Okay, so let's take a look at GK and G4. Now the tricky thing about these materials is that it doesn't have this time indicator. So of course, this is where it's up to you as a teacher to prepare the material beforehand, read over it, and understand what the main focus should be. Now for the GK level, the vocabulary part is very, very important because at this age, the student is still extending their vocabulary in English and if they, even if they can read it, if they don't understand what they're reading, then it won't be of use to them. Now for the G4, of course, the main priority should be the mind map. Now, if you would like some more ideas on how to distribute the minutes within these two materials, you can pause the video and look at this page as a reference. So know your student's level, anticipate where they might struggle, help them and guide them through it, and you will be able to manage your time successfully within the Step Into Reading series. Okay, so that brings us to material number two, which is Write Source. As the title helps to understand, the purpose of this material is to help the student, well, write. Anywhere from essays, short paragraphs, to short stories. These class materials can be anywhere from 11 to 16 slides, and they can be broken up in four main parts. Number one is the homework review. Number two, writing point. Number three, grammar point. And number four, the homework assignment. These four parts you will see in every series from G1 to G4 and above, and you will catch them with the following icons. So how can we manage right source? How can we manage our time within these four markers? Well, here are some tips. So ideally, if we have a 30 minute lesson with a student, it can be broken up in two parts. In one lesson, you can complete half of it. And in the next lesson, you can finish that lesson material. 
Now, if you have a 60 minute lesson, then you should be able to complete all of the material if that student has really good comprehension. Okay, so how do I know how to divide it and really manage my time within these four points? The answer is again, good preparation. Now, at the start of each lesson material, you will see a little bumblebee. He is our friend. He will tell you what the key components of the lesson are. About 90% of the time, the writing point section will be longer than grammar point. For G1, generally you can do the homework review and the writing point all in one 30 minute class. Stop at grammar point. Now it's your job to go over the material beforehand and you can scroll down to find a good stopping point. Now this stopping point can vary from student to student because some students move along really fast, some students need a little bit more time. And sometimes the homework review at the beginning of the class, depending on your student's level, will actually take up a great portion of the lesson. Now a quick tip to help the homework review go faster is to have the student uh, print out the page, do the homework at home, take a photo and send it to you through the class in chat. That way you can look over it before the class, mark the points that you wanna emphasize and you can go over those points as in the next lesson. Now, as I mentioned for G2 and above, it can get a little bit more complicated as the homework review can take up a little bit more uh, time. So again, that's your job as a teacher to prepare well for the class, go through it with your student's level in mind and find a good stopping point. This is the key to managing your time in RightSource. Okay, so that brings us to our third course material, Wonders. Wonders is composed of fiction as well as nonfiction. And again, it is formed with the objective of helping your student read as well as expand their vocabulary. Now, Wonders lessons are broken up into steps. Each lesson can have anywhere from six to 13 steps. Most of the steps ask the student to read, then answer a series of questions or do exercises. Read, answer, read, answer. This is the pattern repeated throughout the Wonder series. So how can I divide this series and manage my time? One way to distribute the time well within Wonders is if, for example, you have a 30 minute class, you can divide your 30 minutes in the number of steps that are in that class. So example, if I had a class with 10 steps, 30 divided by 10 would me, give me three. So then I would know, okay, do not spend more than three minutes on this step. There are of course steps that are more important where maybe you will need more time to analyze. So it's your job to prepare beforehand to really know which steps these will be. Okay, so what are the steps that are of more importance in Wonders? Well, they are steps with open-ended questions. For example, G2 Lesson 2, the question, what does this story teach you about gossip? These questions make the student think more and it helps you to see if they actually understood what they were reading. Now you will also see questions that have true or false or multiple choice questions. Although maybe if the student is struggling, you can help them out. You should not be taking more time on these points. Another way to manage your time better within Wonders is to focus on the reading. There are several parts that ask the student to write, circle, or draw. However, some students, they struggle with this. They don't know how to use their mouse or their keyboard. So again, you will waste time. You can just ask the student to give you an oral response. Also, maybe your student is struggling to read. Maybe they don't even understand the question because of their limited vocabulary. So again, focus on that. Don't focus on the writing part of this series. If of course your student is more advanced and can easily do this, then you can encourage him, of course. So really try to discern your student's level and keep the class moving. So for G3 and above, you can either complete the lesson within 30 minutes, or if you see your student struggling, you can do the same thing with right source. You can divide it in two parts, but this again requires preparation on your part to know your student and to find a stopping point in your lesson. 
Well, this concludes our video on how to successfully manage our time in class. Now again, this is something that all teachers struggle with and should be analyzed from time to time. There are things that you should analyze and prepare and organize well before your lesson in order for it to be effective and enjoyable for you and the student. And please remember that we as teachers are a team. So feel free to ask for help from other teachers, from the eJoy admin, and please feel free to share your own tips with other teachers. I for sure would love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy teaching.